I'm Robin Vincent and welcome back to the Deckard's Dream build. This is it. This is the start. I have to start. I've been putting it off and putting it off. I've been thinking to myself, oh, I've got to, got to make space. I've got to create a whole day, a whole week, a whole fortnight in which to do it. And that's that's just never, it's never going to happen. So I have to, I have to grab hold of it. I have to jump in. I have to make a start. And so this is that start. And it's it's a little bit frightening, I have to say. So how do you start? Do you start with what? Who? What do you start with? Well, I've decided to start with the main PCB. Why? I don't have any idea. It's a nice big chunky one. I'm going to have a go at that. And I feel that if I finish it, it will look extraordinary and will encourage me to do the rest. Now, the problem with that is, well, the problem with all of it is that you kind of have to start with the surface mount stuff. And that's, and that's tricky. I mean, the reason being is that you want the board to be as flat and stable as possible when you're soldering SMD surface mount bits. And so if you've got a whole bunch of resistors and bits and pieces on the other side, that's just going to make it wobble. So start with the surface mount. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to have to do. Now, there's no way I'm going to sit here and do the whole lot in one go. I'm just going to, I'm going to give it an hour or half an hour or an hour here, an hour there and see, see where I get to. Because it has to be, it has to be possible. Now, in my researching of this, in my procrastination before actually getting anything done, if you like, I've discovered some things that I wanted to talk about briefly. I mean, first off, I have to, to say that the community of Deckard Dream builders are extraordinary and they've been awesomely helpful to me in trying to work out what the components mean and the missing bits and pieces or are there missing bits and pieces or working out what applies to me what doesn't apply to me and generally working my way through the fog because there's a lot of fog a lot of the fog comes about because many many of the the original builders of the Deckard stream were working on the revision one of course and there were some issues with that but they keep popping up in forums they keep popping up in groups and you're going does that apply to me does that apply to the to the Rev2 board, which is what I have, and it's difficult to navigate those sorts of things. But the flip side to that is that because all of the real enthusiasts, I suppose, worked on the first revision, then there's not a whole lot of information out there on revision two, on how to build it, how to put it together, how to start, what order to do things in, how do you even begin? Because the Rev2 board is slightly different from the Rev1. And so you can't follow a Rev1 guide because you might be putting things in. I don't know. Will you be putting things in? I don't know what the differences are. You know, all of these sorts of questions get thrown up into the air. Also, when you start delving into the forums and to the groups and bits and pieces, you find quite a bit of criticism of Black Corporation in the way that they've approached this. And, you know, a feeling of disappointment about the lack of support for the DIY people and how Black Corp seem to assume that the community will just sort themselves out, which is what they have done. But there's a sense from quite a few people that Black Corporation could have done more to support people. And that, of course, in turn means that I can't find a great deal of information about how to put this thing together. I mean, if you've watched any of my Eurorack DIY projects, you'll know that I enjoy a good manual. I like good instructions, or at the very least, a list of things and where they go. You don't really have that with this. I mean, one of the points that people have made in forums is that this is a hugely complex synthesizer it's expensive it requires a lot of investment from the people doing it and surely it would require at least as much guidance as you would building a you know a hundred dollar euro rack unit yeah yeah i think you would but i'm also getting a slight sense that perhaps that's why i'm here now i don't mean say i'm going to show you how to do this no no, no. i'm showing you how to get through it i think <laughs> I get the feeling that Black Corporation sent the PCBs to me for precisely this because for one reason or another they're not able to provide detailed instructions on how to build it and perhaps getting me to do it was a bit of a, a bit of a ploy a bit of a way of of demonstrating that it is possible to build it even with my sort of meager skills and limited knowledge maybe that's it I don't know. I mean, I've had nothing but good vibes from Black Corporation over the whole build so far. But I do very much feel that they've left me to it. And this has become my journey. And it's why it's taken so long, because I need to summon up the courage to actually get stuck in again. So here I am. I'm going to have to blunder my way in, which seems crazy for such 
an expensive and intricate piece of circuitry. However, what other choices do I have? You have to start. And actually looking at the board in a bit more detail, it doesn't have to be so difficult. I mean, it's, it's intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. It's just a bunch of resistors and stuff. It's just a bunch of soldiering, isn't it? How hard could it possibly be? Well, so what resources have I found to help me do this? Well, a couple of things, actually. One of those resources was a couple of fabulous videos by a YouTuber called T. Jimmy Chonga, or Chrissa, I think he calls himself. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll stick the link in the description. But he just did a couple of simple videos on soldering the surface mount caps onto some of the synth voices and watching him do that just filled me with a sense that yeah yeah i can do this this is going to be all right he gave more explanation and more <laughs> detail about how to do that than i've seen in dozens of youtube videos so thank you for that mate that was really useful the other thing i have is the Descartes dream interactive build guide which is just Phenomenal. Now this is for revision one, so I have to treat it with a certain amount of, yeah, all right, it's just giving me an idea. Let me show you what I mean. So it is this. Can you see that? So it's a picture of the board. And what you do is you go through it and each new picture shows you a whole bunch of stuff that's gone on the board. And I can zoom in, I think, if I get that right. Yeah, there we go. You can zoom in see all the bits being populated now that is flipping genius now as i say it's for revision one so i'm not going to take it as gospel as such i'm just going to take it as an indication as the order of which to do things how to put the different bits together i mean that is fantastic i don't know who did that it doesn't seem to say on here i'm sure it says somewhere but it's fantastic again the, the link will be in the description below so i'm going to be using that as a guide to how to take this thing forward. The other thing I'm gonna do is I've printed out, printed out the list of stuff and I'll be ticking stuff off as I go. Now, I have to say that on one side, the screen printing is, is pretty good. You've got all of the resistors labeled, so you can stick them in there and solder them, blah, 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 blah easy. On the other side, all of the surface mount, no labels at all. <laughs> So I just have to keep making assumptions, like I think there's 98 of these, there seems to be 98 of these surface mount what's it? and so they have to be the same. I'm just going to go with that. I'm just going to go with it. So that's the plan. Now I've already wasted a whole load of time talking about it and I really should get on with it. I've got my soldier iron is heated up, I've got some solder somewhere. I'm going to start sticking them on here now if you saw my pulses video when i did my first bit of surface mount stuff you might have seen how i used some flux out of a flux pen and how I, that would seem to be a bit hit and miss i wasn't entirely sure why i should use it or whether it was really helping so i've been looking into that as well and it seems like an enormous faff <laughs> it really does i mean good gracious when you start getting into YouTube videos on flux and then flux cleaning because the whole thing about it is you put it on and then you've got to clean it off and they're talking about chemical baths you're talking about spraying stuff on and then washing it off and what what is this about I mean there has to be just simpler more ad hoc ways of doing this you've got to think this seems to be pretty much the answer man this is from mg chemicals it's just called a no clean flux pen no clean is a bit of a misnomer apparently it doesn't mean you shouldn't clean it it just means it's not going to be as bad as using the regular stuff but i've been looking into i mean why use it it seemed as i said in my pulses video just to be an extra step it sticks in a whole load of extra work of putting this on then cleaning it off why, why do that well Okay, so why use flux at all? I mean, people say it makes the solder flow better, but that's not really it, I don't think. I mean, that, that's part of it. But what it has to be about is that this cleans the contacts. It cleans the pad. It cleans your, what's it? It gets rid of any oxidization, which will stop a decent connection. So ultimately, this is ensuring that when you do your soldering, the connection between the two bits of metal is really good. So that in itself makes me think, oh, it's probably going to be worth it then. 
yeah, it's probably going to be worth it. Because I, I can't stand things which are just done because they're done. If you know what I mean, I like to have an explanation. Why do that? Because there's so many things. Like people say, oh, you're, you, know, you must use a vice. You must use an extractor fan. You must use this. I hate those sorts of things. I will use whatever tools seem to be necessary and help me get the job done. But there's a whole load of stuff out there that people insist upon, which is largely unnecessary, or at least for this level of stuff. I mean, they're all good ideas. They're all things that absolutely you should have, but you don't have to have. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to be, you know, an arse about it. I just don't like unnecessary steps. And I don't like to think that you have to buy thousands of pounds worth of equipment just to to enter into this world. I think you can do it with a soldier iron. I mean, you know, I bought a decent soldier iron. I spent money on that. And so I'm already being taken along down this road to buy an expensive stuff. But I'm just trying to do it simply and thoughtfully as possible so i've got this then how do you clean it <laughs> so i'm looking into that there's big bottles of chemicals as i say baths and washes and sprays and showers like god gee whiz this can't be right can't i just use a piece of kitchen roll i don't know because what happens is that this leaves behind a residue and that residue has the potential of eating its way through your circuit board I mean, it seems nuts that you would put something on your circuit board, which is ultimately going to eat its way through it. But that's what we do. That's what we do. I'm not here to, to challenge accepted norms necessarily. <laughs> I'm here to, to be a, I don't know, to be clueless. So even the no clean stuff leaves a residue to some degree. Now they say that you don't really, really need to clean it because it's not really, really going to be a problem unless you're putting your circuit board into a spacecraft or piece of medical equipment then really who cares if it gets a little bit corrupted after 50 years but you know i want it to look nice and to be nice and so it makes some kind of sense to clean that up as well so i've ordered a similar flux pen but a flux pen remover from the same company that's supposed to work with this so the plan is i think that i stick this on the little bits here that helps stick the little surface mount capacitor to the board solder it on Bish bash bosh. Good. And then at the end, I can use the remover pen, scrub all that on, and that sort of releases the bits. And then I scrub it off with a toothbrush or a, or a cotton bud or I don't, know, I don't quite know. I don't quite know that bit. I've never seen that bit done all the way. People talk about it and tell you about it, but I've never actually seen the full process for something as simple as, as what I'm doing. So hopefully I can show a bit of that. Anyway, this is far too much, far too much talking not enough action. So how this is going to pan out now, I don't know. I mean, this is going to be probably a separate video by itself. I don't think I'm going to wait until the entire motherboard is done because that could take weeks and weeks and weeks. So I'm going to focus right now on the surface mount, see if I can get that going a little bit. And then once I've finished the surface mount, I'll probably then post this video of that stage. And then perhaps I'll finish all the rest of the components. I don't know. I'm just going to have to play it by ear and see how it goes. So, these are apparently the 98 surface mount capacitors that have to go on these fiddly little bits all the way around here. There's 98. 98. 98! And my assumption is that there's only 98, so I can't twang one off my desk and lose it. I have to keep all of them. Now I've been thinking about how I take these out of here, how I do that, how I keep hold of them, how I keep them from running away and disappearing. And <laughs> do I have a good idea? No, I don't know that I do. Right, tweezers. Good. So, I mean, maybe it would be a good idea, it's got holes in it, to open it up in a bag. I mean, if I stick these in here, and then pull the front off. I would then have them all in one place. Because my fear is, my experience with doing it before, is as I try to unpin it, and wherever it is, tape it, and glue it, and I don't know, take the top off, take the lid off, take this front bit off, is that they just go everywhere. So if I was to do that within a bag, <laughs> so you would have thought people have thought about this well maybe they have 
if I just do that, I'm just doing it, just going for it. It seemed like a good idea. I thought, heck, let's do it, let's do it. Then I've got all these tiny little weeny things. God damn it, they are small. Maybe they're lighter than air. Okay. So I have in that corner. These are a lot smaller than the ones I did on the pulses. So let's make sure they're all there. Oh, goodness. Nerly's tin. Very useful. Without breathing. <laughs> These are going to go in there. Okay, that seemed like a good idea. Now, should I count these buggers? Ah, oh, these are so small. So there we have 100 tiny weeny capacitors. Each one's going to have to go onto one of these little buggers here. Flipping it. So I'm going to start here. I've got those in shot. I'm going to attempt to do what it says. I've got what I need. Where's my solder? <laughs> so with the flux pen, it has flux inside it and you push down and it starts to flow into the little felt bit at the bottom. It starts to flow into this. So then the plan is that you kind of paint it on. Just like that. I'm not trying to do anything clever. I'm not trying to do anything big. I just want a little bit of it on there, which cleans the contact. This is my understanding. It cleans the contact and makes for a better connection between everything. Now I could put solder on it, or I could put this on here and then solder directly to it. I'm going to put these on and see what happens with that. Hmm. <laughs> ridiculous no oh, okay I'll just keep one on there just in case I sneeze so the thing with it is is that it mustn't short must it okay got to make sure that it's on one side and not the other so I'm gonna heat up a heat up a pad And give it some solder. Heat up the other pad. Should be, should be as simple as that. Now somewhere I've got my ridiculous glasses things. Maybe I should put those on. Are right, you ready? Well, I don't know. I mean, is it on there? It seems to be. What else can I go on? I'm just gonna heat that up and give it a little push to see whether I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If I look at my pulses that I know works. Yeah, it's similar. It's similar. It's similar. All right. Just, uh, it's uh let's uh let's keep at it let's keep at it so
Well, that was crap. <laughs> that just went straight on the end of me. What's it? Okay. See, the other option is to put some solder onto there to start with. And then kind of push into it. See, that's pretty good. That, that I think is actually better. So I think from this point, I just need to, to focus on it and get it done. And I'll talk to you in a bit. Right, I'm just at the end of finishing all of those capacitors on this board. But what I thought I would do now is just I've got this last one, two, three, four, five to do that I would have the cameras back on and show you how to do that and probably put this bit at the front. Put the tip of my soldering iron on the first pad, give it a second, present it with some solder, kind of like that. I mean a lot of the solder is going on the end of my tip, I mean I don't know, and but also that tends to flow off back onto the pad again just like that now you can kind of tell when the pad heats up because sort of a film appears or some solder moves onto it and then you know you can put more solder on it and that is going to work and not just go straight onto the iron although it does that too it definitely does that. Then I pick up the tweezers, get my ridiculously small capacitor, I reheat the pad, push the capacitor up to it, let go of the soldering iron first, and it's stuck. It's there, it's soldered, just like that. Another one, heat it up, move it in, release the soldering iron, and it's soldered. Can it be that simple? I don't know. <laughs> Must be. Great. Now, to solder the other side. Now, at this point, I wish I had a thinner end to my soldering iron, but I don't. This is... This is what I've got, this is what I'm using, and it is working. But with a slightly narrower tip, it would be easier to get this on that pad. But again, you can see when the pad is heating up because of the way the, the flux changes and the little bit of solder flows onto it off your soldering iron. So you know that that's pretty much working. Am I putting enough solder on? I don't have the faintest idea. I have no idea.
should be it. <laughs> I mean, look at the state of it. They're all poking out in all sorts of different directions. That should be all of the surface mount. I mean, is it? Really? The surface mount? Wow. See, that's not so hard. It's not so hard. I mean, I do them in batches, like, you know, five to ten at a time in one orientation. So do a whole load, then dab all the pads, then do the one side, put the uh, capacitor on, and then solder the other side. And that seems to work like a charm. Absolutely. My only reservation is, well, I don't have any idea whether this is actually on or not. Don't know whether they really are soldered. Are any of them shorted? Now that one looks to me like I haven't soldered the other side. See, this is why this is important. <laughs> so there seems to be one there. Yeah, that's not soldered. That's not soldered. How about that? Right. So that's something I definitely need to do. Let's solder that now while I'm thinking about it. That one there. Let's go through the rest then. So these have turned out to be useful then. Thanks Dad for those. That's just brilliant. They are completely useful because you do need to get in there to be able to see these things. I mean, they're not beautifully done. They're just, they're just done. <laughs> right, it's time for me to stop for some lunch. I think, and just to go and sit down and recover from my first bit of Deckard's Dreaming. Wow, that's all the surface mount on this board. There's a whole load of stuff on here, actual chips, which are already pre-done for you. It's only, as far as I can work out, it's only those capacitors. So after this, I can then do the right side of the board and do all the things like the resistors and the regular stuff, all the through-hole stuff. But that's exciting. I think this will be useful as a video by itself just to show the surface mount side of things and to update everyone on the fact that I have started it because it may take me some time to finish this thing. But as it's going, I'm pleased with that, encouraged with that, feeling good about that. And I hope that this has been helpful to anybody else out there giving this a go. Because it is, it's doable with that one, just that little doubt back in my head saying, you're not gonna know whether this works for another two or three months probably so it's all very well just soldering stuff going yeah that's great but i don't have any way of testing that it's doing what it should be doing and they are in the correct place and i've done it correctly no way no way at all but that's part of the adventure i guess i step into it having no idea whether out the other end i'm going to come away with a, a fantastic polysynth or maybe just a very expensive box of bits no idea <sighs> in the meantime go make some tunes <laughs>